Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about unconfined and confined aquifers again. I uh, previous, previously made a video about this topic, but I didn't stress a point in that video uh, that I'd really like to hammer home in this one, and that is the difference in the potentiometric surface and the water table in confined and unconfined aquifers. It's a very important distinction, um, and it's something that I didn't completely understand uh, during my studies in college. Okay, so before we get into this, I need to define two terms, and those are water table, which you probably can figure out what that is. The water table is the elevation of water in the aquifer. So in this example right here, the water table will be right there. It's the elevation of water in the aquifer. And the other term is potentiometric, potentiometric surface. And let me see if I spell that right. Potentiometric surface. Yes, potentiometric surface. And the potentiometric surface is the elevation to which water will rise in a well. So in this example, it'll be right there. Okay, that's the potentiometric surface. Okay, two important distinctions that I will explain in this video. So let's start out with our unconfined example here. And um, let's just go through the diagram really quick. So here's our rock unit that is acting as our aquifer, and let's call it a sandstone. And then here's our well, and I'm not going to call it a well right now. I'm going to call it a piezometer. And a piezometer is a well, basically, but its sole purpose usually is just to measure the water table or the potentiometric surface in an aquifer. Okay, it's not usually used for pumping water out of a well. Okay, so in an unconfined aquifer, here you have your water table. So in an unconfined aquifer, the potentiometric surface and the water table are the same thing. That is to say, the, the elevation of water in the aquifer will be the same as the water elevation in the well. Because the water, remember, the water table is the elevation of water in the aquifer. The potentiometric surface is the elevation of water in the well. And in unconfined aquifers, it's the same. And you may say, well, that's simple. I mean, why are we even making a distinction between the water table and the potentiometric surface? Well, in an unconfined, they're the same, so we don't really need to make a distinction. But in a confined aquifer, the water table and the potentiometric surface are not the same. There will be a difference in elevation between the two. But for now, no, in an unconfined aquifer, the potentiometric surface and the water table are the same. That is to say, again, that the water table, that the water elevation in the aquifer and the water elevation in the well are the same elevation, okay? There's our water table, and here's our potentiometric surface inside the well. And let me just kind of highlight that so you can see it a little better. I'm just going to use red. So that's the potentiometric surface. It's the elevation to which the water is rising in the well. And so in an unconfined aquifer, they're the same thing. Okay, pretty straightforward. So let's look at the difference in a confined aquifer. And let's go through our little diagram here. Here we have the sandstone. And then on top of our sandstone, we have, uh, let's call that a shale, like a confining unit, confining bed. And then here's our piezometer. Okay, so let's look at this. This is different, and why is this different? And what do we know about confined aquifers? We know that the water here in this confined aquifer is under pressure. Okay, there's pressure built up because there's this overlying uh, confining bed overlying our, our aquifer there, and it's causing this water to build up pressure inside this aquifer. And so let's look at our water table in the confined aquifer. And it's right at that, that contact between the overlying shale and the sandstone. So we know this water is not going to rise up. That's not going to happen because this shale isn't going to transmit water like the sandstone will. So instead of this water rising up into this shale, it's just going to build pressure against that shale. Okay, There's going to be pressure built up at that contact between our sandstone and the shale. Because it's not going to move up, it's just going to build pressure against that contact. And so imagine this is our water table, because it's not going to rise above that contact. 
It's going to stay right there. Now what is our potentiometric surface going to look like? Is it going to be at the water table here or is it going to be higher because this is under pressure? It's going to be higher, right? Because the pressure of the water in this confined aquifer is going to rise up in this well. And so maybe it's going to be like right there. Makes sense? There's pressure in the, in the aquifer acting on the confining bed, acting on the shale. And so when we puncture this aquifer with a, a piezometer or well, that water is under, pressure, is under so much pressure that it's going to rise higher than that contact between the two units. And remember that the contact between those two units is what's defining our water table because the water can't rise into the shale, but it can rise into the well. So therefore, our water table and our potentiometric surface are different because of the pressure in that confined aquifer. Make sense? And so in our confined aquifer, that is, what, that is our potentiometric surface. Okay, it's, it's higher than the water table because the water table is kind of limited. It's, it can't rise higher than the contact between the shale and the sandstone because the shale doesn't transmit water. Okay, so that's the difference between the water table and the potentiometric surface in a confined aquifer. Right, label that too. You know, remember in the unconfined aquifer, there was no difference between the water table and the potentiometric surface because that water in the unconfined aquifer was not under pressure, right? There was no shale or overlying confining unit that was keeping it under pressure. So therefore, the, uh, the water table would be the same inside the wall because there's no pressure acting on that water to force it higher than the water table. Make sense? And maybe the water in this confined aquifer is under so much pressure that it's actually going to, when we puncture it with this well, this piezometer, it's going to actually flow up out of the well to the surface. And that's what we call flowing artesian well. When the water pressure is so great in that aquifer that it's actually going to flow up to the surface beyond, beyond the elevation of our wellhead. Okay? So that's all for this video. Uh, it's, again, it's an important concept and, um, it's pretty simple when somebody actually explains it to you, but it can be a little difficult to understand if you're just reading it in a textbook. And that's it. Uh, this video is helpful to you. Go ahead and like it, subscribe to our channel, and uh, check out the other videos in this hydrogeology playlist. They're really helpful to anyone studying geology or hydrogeology.